Why did the chicken cross the road? Nobody knows, nobody will ever understand. The Millimonte is dead, it just became too large, there have been many incidents as the cars grew faster and faster, people have been standing in the fields of the farmers destroying their crops, cars went off into the crops, cars went over, animals like we have seen before. The government, our old friend, had to put an end to this and this is why racing from now on will have to move to closed tracks and this is why also Cesalpina will need to refocus their racing efforts. What a nice coincidence that the highest class of racing, what we nowadays know as Formula 1, will be run to Formula 2 regulations from 1961 onwards. This is limited to 1.5 liter engines and this is totally in Gisalpina's comfort zone. Has racing ever bankrupted a company? I don't think so. Will Gisalpina fly too high, playing with the big guys, or will this elevate the brand to the levels of our major competitors? Let's find out in this new episode in the campaign mode of Automation, the car company Tycoon game. So we are in May of 1958 and currently things are looking pretty good. We have 10 million in the bank and a positive company valuation. Credit rating is not that good because we have so many loans. We owe the bank about 18 million almost. So yeah, we need to make up for that money. But the next project can probably be paid with our own money. That's a good thing. Let's take a look at our sales numbers. So here for Fruinia and Dolua, because we're not selling anything to Hedvesia yet. Um, we see that we have nice coverage of the sports market. So basically in all of the major sports markets we have about 10%. So let's take a look at our competitors. Here in Light Sports, um, in Fruinia and Dalua we are already in P4. Behind our Fruinian competitors Corvarolo, Montefusco and Calidas Incorporated. What does Corvarolo have? Yeah, Light Sports cars from 1952. Track car. They have pretty decent stats, yeah, drivability, comfort, prestige. Mostly in comfort, I think they are a little bit better, but that's the way it is. We have a different philosophy, I would say. Let's take a look at the supercar market, our upcoming most important market, maybe. Um, there we sell the old Montone, three pieces of those, and we're the fifth largest manufacturer there. Again behind Montefusco, uh, Corvarolo is not that strong here. So Montefusco here is pretty, what looks like pretty large coupes with low drivability but a lot of sportiness. They probably have huge engines, but they are all failing the emissions. Huh. Maybe we can gain a few sales soon in case they don't update their cars. Let's see. Yeah, but for now the Nuova Via is still in engineering until 1960 and yeah in 1961 we have the new formula one regulations the drivers world championship is run with formula two cars for the next years so with the death of the millimonti we want to get into a different kind of racing and maybe let's try open wheelers and the engine capacity limit of 1.5 liters lends itself very well for a new inland four engine concept we can later use for affordable light sports cars. So yeah, let's head right into designing a race car. And yeah, the race car basically can go into the track market because they only have a one seat requirement. Um, we just need to see how large those markets are. Currently we are not selling into there, but the track market is actually existing. We're limited to my awareness, it's not. But yeah, maybe we need to get away with very limited production. And I guess a few of the sales would also spill over into other categories, even though every other demographic wants to have two seats. We'll see. For now, let's aim for track. Track budget will probably not be possible because we probably still won't manufacture our own engines. And here we have our body. The wheelbase is probably a bit long for Formula 2 regulations, but we have to go with it. Yeah, that's how it looks like. We will have to do a lot to make this work in automation and to make it look right. But I'm looking forward to it. It's a new challenge and let's see what we can do. Here for ultimate lightness, I maybe want to try out fiberglass, especially as this project doesn't need to be profitable. I would like to get my money back, but anything more than that would be a bonus. Then of course we have space frame. 
steel. We want to have it mid-engined. And yeah, suspension, I have to go with double wishbone, which was typical for the front. In the rear, they normally had different kind of suspension in uh, racing with very long arms here leading from the middle of the car to the back. So it was some kind of deconstructed double wishbone uh, suspension. Nowadays you would say it's a multi-link with a very very long uh, suspension arm. We will do that with 3D fixtures, um, but from physics wise it will be double wishbone. And then we need to make a new engine. As I said, it's inline 4. And yeah, let's go pretty much all out here for this one. Um, this will probably then last us for a long time. The bad thing is just that the block still is um, cast iron. We don't have any other choice yet. So just the head material will be aluminum, or aluminium as it's pronounced correctly. Um, and then we need probably something with very short stroke to make it rev so that we make enough power and are competitive. Yeah, for now let's go for everything pretty light and then see what we can do. And here of course power option would be um, nice DCOEs. Let's try with those. Other people suggested that Singleberry Eco would be quite nice, but this doesn't look very racy to me. So let's go with these. Nice. And then for the fuel, we do get some 98. Hmm, now you could argue we could also go for 110, but it's only available in the Lua. And the track market is basically just in Fuenia. <laughs> you see that we get one more car when we click on the Lua, but actually it's just half a car probably. <laughs> um, so the track market is not yet existing in the Lua, so we have to go with 98 run. And of course here also nice spaghetti exhaust. No mufflers for now. And let's see what this can actually do. Oh, RPM threshold doesn't look all too nice. I am aiming for around 190 horsepower. And that's about what Ferrari made. And they had the world championship twice, I think, in the Formula 2 period. And I'm far away from that. Far, far away. I would like to have some light forged pistons, but I don't think they are available yet. So this combination is probably what's best. I need balance shafts. And then we are at 120 horsepower. Let's get it basically right, but I think we need to rev higher. So let's reduce our stroke even more. Increase the bore, maybe 90 bore. The engine will be heavier, of course, if we go down this route. Um, we can invest a little bit into quality. That's totally fine. But the engineering time will suffer. So it's okay if we get a warning here for reliability for the race version. That's not a problem for me at all. <laughs> We're still far away. Yeah, compression. 144. Let's optimize the exhaust. Smaller is better in this case. And also I need to get some nice resonance up there. No. Oh, it doesn't look too promising as of now. 150 horsepower only. We need more quality here as well. And I don't know how we should make this available in time for the 1961 season. We only have two and a half years, or let's say the season probably starts in March or April, so we need to get it done until then. Can advance the timing here a bit. Also run a bit richer, but uh, then we have emission problems probably. Also it doesn't help too much. Yeah, where do we get our power from? 
Yeah, more cam helps, of course, but yeah, the power band is pretty limited. I need better carbs as well, then we're at 171. That's about it, if I don't want to spend much more. The engineering time will kill me. Let's check that one out first, so I have to finish the car roughly. So we can easily get the car down very much. Yeah, car is not a problem yet. We can spend quality there. But the engine, 113. Yeah. If we don't learn a lot, we are already at 30 months. And the family quality is what drags it up as of now. We can spend a bit more in top end. We can also try if um, two valves is a bit better. Yeah, power is just very bad and it doesn't save us a lot of engineering time. We need to reduce at least one click here and then we can add more in the top end and it doesn't help too much. So we probably have to sacrifice a bit more reliability by reducing the, fem the, the bore and increasing stroke. This will give us a little bit more power, I hope. So as of now we would be 10 horsepower short of the Ferrari, which is probably alright, we don't need to be the best one in the very beginning. And I also need to check if the emissions would still be alright. So would we get this one done in time? 28 months um, would be alright. We have... Actually I just looked up the reality. Um, in 1961 they started racing in May, so we have 36 months. So maybe... I can still do a bit more here in the engine family quality. Yeah, that would still be all right and I can spend even more. So I, I want to learn a little bit of course, I also need to make it a bit cheaper. So yeah, it needs to be really cheap. So something like this would be all right. The engine will probably be really, really, uh, really, really expensive. And I also need a new contract here. Manifattura di motori in Anilla. And it would cost me 16.4k, yes. I think that's not acceptable. Because that's roughly the budget of our demographics, right? Yeah, 16.7. <laughs> um, back to the drawing board. And this one needs to go away. We'll reduce quality a little bit. And I have to go with 175 horsepower, maybe. It will still be plenty fast. And for 36 months now, how much do they charge us? It will still be way too much. 12.6k. Yep. Let's just see. We also need a new racing shed for that. I guess we will lose money with this project. Cost to reduce 27k. Ouch. Yeah, but I cannot tell anything yet because I don't know how good the car will be. Maybe it will be bad. Maybe we will not have a lot of power. 
because we need to simplify the engine. But I want to do this. Yeah, maybe let's first start with the engineering just to see how good <laughs> this car actually will be. I need to do some basic things at least. So we will definitely use the basic chassis, maybe even remove that. But yeah, with this we can at least do something. Then we need at least basic morphing. We cannot do too much here anyway. And then we will certainly increase um, the track width here. And also what cars back in the day had was larger rear diameter than front. So I will just reduce the front for now. Oh, how, how tiny can they be here? Ah, it's probably a bit too much, right? Let's go with 550 and in the rear maybe 600. They also had cross plies, so they look like this, so I need to choose the cross ply here. And we will, as you see here, we definitely need to model the suspension on our own. So they complain about low comfort. If I go from basic, it's a bit better, <laughs> four points better. I, but I think I have to go with race. Safety wise, um, standard 50s is not enough, advanced 50s also not enough. That's a bummer because we have Infoenia 20, also in 1960, which is good. If Dalua doesn't care, Hedvesia needs more. I definitely won't be able to do that. So I need to take a look at this and make sure that we hit the 20. Just do two clicks of quality. The car itself is working now. Drivability is still a bit bad. But we are getting there 80% desirability. So with brake airflow, we can probably get rid of brake fade a bit more. And with more cooling we can also limit the top speed <laughs> 250 also seems about right with the amount of power we are making 90 percent here in track but still we will probably be very expensive so that's about as much as we can do Let's check it out. Yeah, we can save a bit of money here, of course. And yeah, we don't sell anything yet. About 20k with a loss. We will sell cars. Not many, but we can sell them. Uh, what do I do with this project? The, the main cost driver is the engine. We need to find a way to make it cheaper. So we will definitely be down on power. But maybe we will still be a decent customer car for Formula 2. Point four, yeah, it's 5k cheaper, I guess. Let's first make our engine look good. So, this is now the cheaper version with only 160 horsepower. We need to work on reliability, even if. The car is a bit more expensive then.
Yeah, normally I don't like to cut off my power curve so much. But I need the reliability. So maybe let's have something very drivable. And not something for the utmost top speed tracks. Yeah, maybe that's also better for the company law. So, what does the project say now? I really want to have a bit more reliability. Let's maybe save some money here. It's the material cost. And it's down to 9.6. Let's try a different combination. 9.3. Nine point, no, it's more expensive, but it's also more reliable. So I need to go with this. It's pretty balanced between labor and material. And now, yeah, is this a viable project? I'd say definitely not. Six units per year is basically a factory racing effort. We will have to treat this as a development project. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's just see the summary. And then we're at 16 million. We can afford that. It will be a waste of money. We will not take a loan out for that because we need to improve our credit score. And then we have a very nice Inland 4 engine engineered, which will hopefully help us once we get our own engine factory going. So now the fun part, finally, um, let's get to designing the car. So let's start with painting, of course. Uh, not new paint, just a penal red. Very good. The window is more transparent. And we can also paint the inside of the car in red. And what I also want to do is maybe um, to paint these trim pieces in nice Fruinian green. Let's do it like this. Oh, yeah, the rims also don't look exactly right. And now, yeah, basic stuff. We need a lot of rivets. We need different body panels. Um, but I also want to get the engine some air. Yeah, question is, do we want to run completely exposed engine? I would like that because you see more. Or do we want to cover it? Typically they ran quite covered engines, probably for aerodynamics reasons. But we will run it open. And then the question obviously also is, do we just get rid of the rest as well here in the rear? I played around with that and it was quite hard to do. Also, I don't like the basic chassis anymore. And I again forgot to place the steering wheel first. And maybe I'll just place it right now. Because right now I can still count all of these fixtures. And then we can still make it possible to turn in BeamNG. I had to quickly look up which kind of steering wheels they used back in the day and it looked still like um, the Ferrari shark nose had some wooden wheel. It 
doesn't look like the axis here is properly aligned so I cannot use the steering wheel. So let's just use this one. It's all weird here in the bottom. Yeah, it's not working very nicely. Also, I cannot just paint the whole car transparently. I tried that. Um, then I don't have any body panels anymore. It's all connected. Ah, oh, it's such a pain. Why do I do this all of the time? Okay. A little bit of progress. We still have something here. I guess this also won't work very well in Beam. Yeah, I don't seem to get rid of this part. And yeah, also this thing is still there. Yeah, I guess I need to Photoshop that away in case it... And that's as good as it gets, I believe. Now we have to build our rear subframe. At it, let's also plan our suspension arms there. Probably also have seen things like this on photos of earlier F1 cars. Very boxy in the rear. Maybe. Let's give it a bit a different shape. Maybe like this. I think this looks a bit better. Um, yeah, let's fix the exhaust. Still need to fix my suspension stuff. So let's now add a few more seams. I think this also really helps to make it look more realistic. And then of course it's time to do a bit of riveting the hell out of this body. So I took a look at older images of F2 cars, F1 cars of this era and this is how they looked like and again I think rivets are the way to go to make it look a lot more realistic. So designing and detailing the car like this is basically meditation. Just add a bit more detail here and there. You know what you have to do, you don't have to think a lot, just do it. Yeah, the suspension stuff was a bit less meditation. I tried to detail it, I tried to make the rear subframe somewhat realistic. Also removing one of the A arms and made a single arm out of this I think makes more sense from a suspension point of view. I didn't take a look if the suspension now really has one degree of freedom or if I completely locked it in place. Um, 
I think it looks alright from the outside and that's enough. Then a little bit of interior work. Just very basics, a few switches, the dashboard and of course our plate with the type information. And then we're basically done. Alright, one final try to make this one viable. So we're at 97% as of now. So let's try to find a bit more desirability in this one. Yeah, radial would be nice, but we have to stick with sports crossply because that is what looks correct. Maybe we can also make the tires look a bit better with advanced trim settings. I'm still not the biggest fan of the rims. Yeah, maybe let's use these. Still a bit of brake fade, but the front force, I cannot reduce it anymore. And I could go, of course, for single shoe drums. No, it's actually better with these, but of course it's cheaper. And yeah, maybe one thing I learned um, from other players during preparation of the Millimonti is um, that we can gain quite a bit here with cheesing the toe a bit. Um, I will do that, but yeah, limit myself a bit to not too, not too high value. So the car wants to turn more with negative toe in the front, and then we compensate that with toe in the rear. So these are already quite extreme values. You can gain even more with higher values, but for now, yeah, you gain 2-3%, I think that's fine. We could also try to use wider front tires, but I think from visual point of view we're alright. Let's leave it at this. I see a problem here, and maybe use another strut to make our car safer from rollovers. Let's do that and then call it a day. Maybe let's do it like this. Or maybe we can even hide that one and use our own because I don't like the shape. Then with this one, I think we don't need it anymore, and it looks better. And yeah, now spending the money. Five million here. Seven million here. A new racing shed, and yeah, terrible. Maybe um, this time we don't even want a deposit. Um, oh, I cannot go lower than 10%. <laughs> I was hoping um, we could just accumulate a few of the sales. But yeah, six units a year or a bit more in the second year. It looks about right. We won't build many of those and mainly use the project to learn. No loan, 16 million. We should be able to afford it, but I have forgotten if the Nuova Via was built on a loan or not. We certainly took out a bit of a loan, it's probably not all of it.
I guess we should be able to make it. The Nuova Via will also give us a cash injection. So let's just try. I'll do a safety copy of my game. And let's just try it without a loan. We should be able to do the racing stuff without a loan because yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to get money from the bank for a project that's just losing us money. All right, then let's just go and see how our finances develop. Yeah, like this, it's fine. Oh, we have a quality issue with the Montone, a severe issue with low chance. <laughs> I like those. So we could either do nothing or pay this. And I guess we'll pay this for the quiet recall. And the Nuova Via has its first three orders. Very nice. And we have a very balanced budget. No taxes again. Excellent. And let's just roll until the Nuova Via is there. And then call it a day for today. And plan our next steps. Oh, now we have a little bit of a problem here. I don't know what happened. Are we producing at full scale? Yes. Don't know. But it has recovered. We are still losing a bit of money, but at this rate, we are completely fine. Just our credit score is tanked again. Ah, no. 16% chance. And it was, it was discovered, and we get a huge reputation damage and prestige damage. Well, there we go. Yeah, there is our reputation. That will not help. The Nuova Via has completed engineering. We have only 49 pre-orders for both the Bellinetta and the Spider. And I think somebody also mentioned that the Spider should be written with an I. Safety regulations have been updated. It's the same in Fuenia. That's good. In the Lua, they have also been, you know, will be updated in 1972 or 15, so the Montone will still be fine. But the sales have tanked, so I guess we have new competitors. The desirability is really bad now. So it likes port. Oh, yeah, it's. We don't sell anything anymore. Sport Premium, just a few. Few sports, nothing in track. Few supers, yeah, that's the Nuova Via, as we see here. Convertible Sport. So we have very spread out um, market as of now, which means we are not really strong, I guess, in any area. The convertible Sports in the Lua is our strongest market. So I hope our reputation and stuff will recover soon. Because at this rate, with 1 million loss in a month, um, we will not survive for long. So this is how it looks like. I definitely need to cut back on production of the Montone, because they are not selling anymore. Take a look at this, we have delivered 50 cars per month before that, and now we have only 20 possible sales, so the Montone is basically done. Cut back production to half a shift again, and I let it tick for one more month. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I think the Nuova Via is slowly, slowly getting there. This will be really hard uh, to survive. I think we, if we can keep it at this, at least we can get out the F1 car, or the F2 car <laughs> until then, but then we are basically broke. And I guess I will leave you with this. I will think about how um, we want to proceed. Um, also, what I've seen now is Ahana is now open. I don't know if they want any expensive F2 cars or shitty light sports cars like the Montone is one. I will think about how we proceed. I think what we have learned is racing is a very good way to drive your company into a wall. I still think it was a good project, it was fun to make and I just really hope that uh, we can survive and continue after this. 
But before we end the episode, let's do a quick rollout. And to continue the story, we started with, of course, we will no longer do this on the Millimonti test track, we will do this now on a closed circuit. And until now I have found the Bridgehampton circuit, which very well resembles this 60s to 80s style racetrack. Not a lot of guardrails, a lot of danger, and maybe this will be the racetrack for the future. And we will do all the testing on here. But I wanted to ask you if you have any better idea for such kind of racetrack, because maybe you know more about the beam mods that are out there. And then let's do an update for the lap times of all of our cars in the very near future. What you also can see is that I got the steering wheels moving finally. I finally understood how to do that. So I can work now on an update to all of the cars to have proper steering wheels. And then also include the new Bavia and the F2 in the mod pack. The F2 drives in an expected way, I would say. Um, it's very sketchy because it's light, it's quite powerful. Still, even though we sacrificed so much power. It might also be that our suspension settings, the negative toe in the front and the positive toe in the rear, affect the handling a bit too much. It might also be the advanced trim settings with the tire geometry. That's not doing us any favor here. So I need to experiment a bit more until we give this F2 car a proper run. But this will all be done until I finalize the decision on the future test track. But for now, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed and see you all again next time, bye bye.